I hate the way people approach reviews these days, so I'm gonna try and fix that. I won't be talking about the specs, I'll be showing you everything you want to see about this phone. I won't be talking about is it better than the Samsung S20 and I won't be comparing it to other phones. At the same time, this is gonna be the best review you've seen. Okay, so first of all, screen size. I see that this is massive. Many of you are gonna think that it's, it's so big. Look, it's as big as my hand. Many people are not gonna like how big it is. I like texting with one hand. With a big screen, I can't do that. Dude, you're so mean. You wanna text with one hand? Are you that mean? You don't even care about the person you're texting enough to text with two hands and not waste their time? You're so rude. But you don't understand, I want to text with one hand so I can drink my coffee. Now oh, that's messed up. Why would you want to do that? Well, I have a better idea. Take a sip and then text with two hands. And then take another sip. And then text with two hands. That, I think that's better. Well, I don't. Whatever. And many of you are scared of the size of the phone because you want it to fit in your pocket. That is correct. So yeah, if you don't have big pockets and you don't usually carry a bag around, then that might be a little bit sad and you wouldn't want to go for a big fat screen like the iPhone 12 Pro Max. Then you would go for the iPhone 12 mini or the iPhone 12. We've got four different screen sizes. This is the biggest. The iPhone 12 Pro Max is 6.7 inches. The other phones are smaller, but I personally think that the biggest one is the best. Now, please understand something. I'm upgrading from an iPhone 7. I used to use an iPhone 7 for the past three years and I'm used to a small phone. But when I got the big phone, I liked it more. And here's a size comparison for you guys. And don't worry about the screen flickering. That is because I've got the shutter speed too high. And this is how they are on top of each other. But if you're scared that you won't like a big phone, trust me, you're gonna like it. Like, I tried this big phone for one day and going back to that tiny phone feels so weird and annoying. It's so much bigger to have this big phone. Another reason you might find this screen too big is if you have very small hands. Now, I have medium-sized hand. It's not too big, but it's as big as the phone almost. But don't worry, you can still text with one hand even if you wanted to do that but it's a little bit harder than with two hands. So I prefer two hands. I was scared just like you to get a big screen, but when I got the big screen, I now can't go back. So nice to have a massive screen. Okay, we're done with screen size. Tell them. Tell them what? Tell them. So pushy. Okay, okay. Subscribe now because if you don't subscribe, I will kill you! I do you think they recognize me? Put some glasses on. Tell them more. Huh? Oh. Smash the button! Watching! This thing has rough edges. I don't understand why people hate them. Really? Rough edges? Ew! That's disgusting, man. I really disagree with the people that think that it has to fit your hand more naturally and it has to feel nicer and have less rough edges. Because in the end of the day, you're going to be holding this thing and you don't want to drop it. Even the flat edges, it is much easier to grip onto and you're less likely to slip. Never felt like it was going to slip out of my hands. In contrast, if you use a curved, more natural edge screen, it always slips, which is not nice. And the bonus is it feels so much more premium, I don't know why. If you get a, a gold, a brick of gold, 
would you want it to have rough edges like this or would you want it to have rounded edges i think if it had rounded edges it would look ugly i can easily grip this thing with two fingers thanks to this design two fingers is all i need what about the screen man you talk about the screen the screen is the most important part man what are you talking about the screen on this phone is awesome apple have finally used oled panels in the screens and they look awesome oled panels are the most popular type of panel used in tv screens these days because they give the best experience the screen is gorgeous and you get a very high pixel density and everything looks sharp dang it it only has 60 hertz man what the hell like samsung already have 120 hertz even the google pixel the really cheap new one that came out has 90 hertz why does this phone have 60 hertz well here's why because apple like doing things that actually matter apple's approach for things is if it's not necessary don't put it in other companies they just want to put anything extra they can to sell the phone i much prefer apple's way of doing things because they don't spend too much money on things that aren't really important that people aren't even gonna notice if you had a phone with a 120 hertz screen the screen would refresh 120 times every second the iphone is only 60 times every second but really all this 120 hertz is doing is it's wasting your battery life it's making your your phone process more things and most people won't even notice it usually it's beneficial for gamers but why would you want to game on a phone when you can game on a computer when you can game on a console that's what they are built for and it doesn't mean that 60 hertz can't game it just means that if you have 120 hertz you'll get an extra advantage but here's a secret if you want to game professionally and you care about having an extra edge use a console or a computer that is what they're built for you don't know what you're talking about man having higher hertz just makes everything smoother now that is a good point Everything, all the animations, when you open an app, when you close an app, are gonna feel smoother. Scrolling windows down and up are gonna feel smoother on 120 hertz. But who cares? Most people are barely gonna notice the difference. And it will barely add to the overall experience. And it's not like anybody really reads while they're swiping. You swipe and then you read and then you swipe and then you read. So honestly, I'd much prefer Apple's approach where they don't include unnecessary things because that way you get higher battery life and they can focus their money into the camera and into other important things. Man, you are so wise. Thank you. Anyhow, that was cringe. So the screen was really terrific and I was super happy with it. And guess what else? They have increased the drop resistance of the screen four times more than the last iPhone. Or so they claim. But I'll leave the drop channels to test that. Anyhow. The screen will give you a very immersive experience and I'm super happy with how big it is and how beautiful the colors look and how vibrant it is and how sharp it is. I've never seen a sharper phone screen in my life. I see what you mean. The screen actually looks very nice. I'm surprised. I'm coming from an iPhone 7. Yeah, but yeah, but dude, when are you going to talk about the important stuff? Tell them about the speakers. The speakers are honestly out of this world. I would never expect a phone speakers to be this loud and to sound this good so this is how it sounds at 25 percent i'm gonna try keep it where my voice is so you can compare it to my voice so this is how it sounds at 50 percent so i'm talking right now in a normal voice and it's a little it's a little bit louder than my voice at 50 percent which is pretty awesome Okay, and now this is how it sounds at 75%. It is so loud, like it's way louder than my voice at 75%. And this is how it sounds from 100%, way louder than my voice. I'm actually really impressed. Yeah, I mean, you're right. It sounds really terrific. Never seen that before. Honestly, I'm astonished. I hate Apple, but yeah, it sounds nice. I agree. Now, please also understand that the speaker test won't be 100% accurate. This microphone is not gonna pick up the speaker exactly how I can hear it. At the same time, I am filtering what this microphone hears to reduce the noise from the computer. It has a super punchy and clean bass, and at the same time, all the sounds, the mids and the highs, they also sound really, really good. You know another reason why you should go for the iPhone 12 Pro Max? The speaker in the iPhone 12 Pro Max is actually bigger and louder than the iPhone 12 Pro, iPhone 12, and mini. You're racist! You're racist! Everything is safe, positive, everything is cool! Why? And next is the microphone test. The microphone on the iPhone actually almost sounds better than the studio microphone right here. 
So this is me talking on the iPhone 12 Pro Max and it sounds, I think, pretty awesome. And this is without any filtering or anything. But now because I always filter the microphone, I'm going to also filter the iPhone sound so you can hear how it sounds filtered without the noise. And when are you going to tell them about the camera, man? I'm bored. I'm just bored. The camera is the most important part of the crazy. Okay, just be patient, man. I'm, I'm saving the best for the last. So the camera is awesome. I've never seen a better camera in a phone. Coming from an iPhone 7 user. No, but, but really. The camera is so impressive and it, it easily beats the camera that's right here that you're watching right now. Not in all settings, there are some situations where a manual camera is better. But the fact that this tiny phone can beat most professional high-end cameras in photos and look even better is awesome. Okay, as you can see by this photo, you can get a really, really professional looking photo. This was in portrait mode, and I honestly think it's better than it's something that you'd hire a professional to do. And yet I'm not a professional and I could take it just because I have this phone. And it's also because I'm, I'm awesome, let's just admit that. Okay, now that that's out of the way, just kidding, but it definitely does help to take good photos like these, if you know which angles to take them from, and to try put things in the foreground and background to make more depth in the photo. You can see by this selfie photo that even the selfie is like so, so sharp. I was super impressed by how the selfie photo looks. It looks as good as the back camera photos. And this is what a photo looks like with the ultra wide lens. Thanks to the new LiDAR scanner, if you don't know about that, this phone has a LiDAR scanner, which means it can detect the depth of objects. So when you're taking a video or a photo, it knows how far objects are. So then it can process the information and make the objects that are far appear less sharp and the objects that you want to focus on appear more sharp, which is normally what happens naturally in big cameras. But sadly, smartphone cameras, because they have such tiny lenses, can't do the same. So they have to rely on processing. The vibration feature on this camera is amazing. I am on a very bumpy... I am on a very bumpy pavement and the anti-shake reduction technology is awesome. And here is the front-facing camera for the iPhone 12 Pro Max. And if you guys want to use the back camera, this is what the back camera looks like. And as you can see, it looks pretty good. So yeah, you guys could easily use this thing for Wow, man, you took this video with the phone? It looks so awesome. So yeah, if you're thinking about starting a YouTube channel or you wanna, let's say, take videos, vlogs, Facebook Live, Eventagram posts, the camera is super. Every footage I took in this video was without a gimbal. They were all taken with my hand and with a tripod, a cheapo 10 pound tripod. And if you're into action photography, this does a super amazing job at giving you an immersive experience. Look at how immersive this clip looks of me riding the bike. Biggest, biggest, biggest amazing thing about the camera is the stabilization technology. Apple have invented a new technology in this phone and they're using something called sensor optical st image stabilization. Normally phones use the lens to stabilize. The lens itself moves to stabilize the footage. But with this phone, the sensor actually stabilizes the footage. And another thing you need to know about the iPhone 12 Pro Max versus the other versions is it has the biggest sensor. And thanks to the bigger sensor, the iPhone 12 Pro Max can give you up to 87% better low light photography photo. So if you're into low light photography or you like shooting stars, astrophotography, this is superb. Image stabilization on this thing is insane. As you can see in this clip, I am walking and it looks like I'm just floating. And in this clip I'm running and there is honestly not any jitteriness or anything in the footage. It looks so smooth. As you can see from these clips on the bike, the bike vibrates a lot. I am feeling the vibrations in my hand. But somehow, the footage is not vibrating at all. And it looks so smooth, even though I'm going over rocks and rough roads and rough pavements. I'm watching these videos, and I'm honestly now on your side. I think I should buy this phone. How much does it cost? And that is where you're gonna get a heart attack. It costs $1,100 for the lowest storage type, and then $1,200 for 256GB, and then $1,400 for 512GB. You know another cool feature? 
with the iPhone 12 Pro Max and the 12 Pro, you can get raw footage. It's not released yet. It's what the professional cameramen use. Use. Raw footage is so much better than normal footage if you're a professional and you know how to color grade clips. With raw footage, you can increase the exposure of clips, you can decrease the exposure of clips, you can change the white balance, you can color the clips very extensively to get the look you want, and it won't break the colors in the photo and make everything look weird. Raw footage is so much better than normal footage if you're a professional and you know how to color grade clips. And it is the version of footage that is not processed. Now usually the phone processes the footage itself and it gives you the final version after processing which has less information in it and due to it having less information in the footage you can't play with it as much with your color grading software. So this phone doesn't have a fingerprint sensor but it does have face ID and the face ID works really well. It, it's working almost every time I never have to retry it more than once. Listen up here if you want to buy this iPhone buy it from the links in the description or I will kill you. Because I will get a commission, a small commission. I need money, you know, like I spent 1,200 on this thing. Come on, help me out. So yeah, if you use the links in the description, I would really appreciate it. So I can keep making videos just like this. Wait a second, did you subscribe? Because look what I got here. And by the way, hit the notification bell, because guess why? I'm going to make a video about the best cases for the iPhone. And I've bought 11 iPhone cases, iPhone 12 Pro Max cases. So I will have a video where I compare the 11 iPhone 12 Pro Max cases and I will try and tell you which one is the best. So overall, an amazing product from Apple. And if you want to have amazing videos just like this video, make sure to subscribe. And I won't kill you, don't worry. I was just joking, you know. And a like would be much appreciated. And a comment below would also be amazing. You know what else would be nice? Smash the notification bell. Or ding it as you like. Hope you have a very peaceful day. Either way, you should definitely stay updated because I'm going to release some awesome videos about this phone soon. Stay tuned. So I wish you a very nice day and goodbye. Alexa, turn on some music. What else is cool? The phone has an IP68 waterproof rating, which means you can submerge it up to 6 meters of water or down to 6 meters of water for up to 30 minutes, which is awesome.